the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. <clears throat> Jesus said to his disciples, Stop judging, that you may not be judged. For as you judge, you will be judged. And the measure with which you measure will be measured out to you. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me remove the splinter from your eye, while the wooden beam is in your eye? You hypocrites, remove the wooden beam from your own eye first, then you will see clearly to remove the splinter from your brother's eye. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Stop judging and you will not be judged. That is one of the most difficult things that we have to do in life because we all judge. And unfortunately, we judge on external circumstances, what we see. But we know there's another aspect to our lives and that is what goes on on the inside, our interior lives. And nobody can judge our interior lives, our motives, because none of us knows what goes on in the life of another person. You have come here this morning with your cares and your worries, your joys and your sorrows. I don't know what they are. So how can I judge you because I don't see what God sees. God sees the interior. God sees the external and the interior. God knows every aspect of our lives. He is the only one that can judge us. And as a matter of fact, when we judge other people, we are usurping God's work. He's the only one that can judge us. So therefore, when we judge another person, that's God's department, and we are invading God's department. Nobody knows what goes on in the mind and heart of any other person. You don't know what goes on in my mind this morning. I had a call from my sister the weekend telling me her husband had cancer of the liver. Now, you wouldn't know that until I told you. And it's the same for all of us. We all have our own concerns and worries. So instead of judging one another, we should really pray constantly for one another. I told you last week about this a Eucharistic minister at St. David. She has a very good friend who's a Eucharistic minister. And her son was bullied in school, which is a terrible problem nowadays, we all know. And it got so serious that he murdered the kid that was bullying him. And of course, he was arrested and was, first of all, they were going to send him to the electric chair, but they changed their minds and they gave him 25 years in jail. Now he's just there 25 years. He studied, he got his master's in jail. So last week he came up for, before the board to evaluate his life, hoping that he would be released, but he wasn't. They sent him back to jail for another seven years. That's a very complicated case. I mean, he did commit the crime. But is it right that he should spend the rest of his life in jail? I wonder what the mother of the child that was killed would say. You know, we've all seen on television the court cases and somebody's been murdered <clears throat> and the family will come out and say, I hope he burns in hell. Now that's a perfectly normal reaction. Maybe I would say the very same thing in the same situation. Let him burn in hell or let her burn in hell. It's a perfectly normal and human reaction to a terrible situation. But 
Can we judge that other kid now by giving him seven more years in jail? Or because he's bettered himself, educated himself, should he be given a second chance? It's a big question, and there are pros and cons on both sides, as we all know. So it's a very sad situation. It's a very sad situation for his mother this morning to know that she'll have to visit her son for another seven years every day that he's in there. So all that we can do, we cannot judge. We cannot judge because nobody knows really what goes on in the heart of that mother or in the heart of her son.